bet. U.S. lawmakers introducing fresh legislation in response to the shootings in San Bernardino. Meanwhile, the new bill will require social media companies to report any online terrorist activity they become aware of. This is coming after President Obama urged technology companies to cooperate with government investigations in an Oval Office address on Sunday. Joining us right now is Cavern Systems CEO J.D. Sherry, a seasoned technology executive, uh, very familiar with these cyber issues. Good to see you, J.D. Good morning. I want to, you know, we, we know that Farouk was posting about Islam, posting about Israel needing to be off the face of the earth. And so how did we miss this? Well, I, I think it comes back to our efforts at, at mining the uh, the internet for these types of keys, right? And and finding the the needle in the haystack of needle when it comes to uh, terrorism intelligence. This is a, a fundamental challenge that we've faced leading up to 9/11, certainly post 9/11, on how much we're able to from a from a terrorism perspective, dive into these channels to determine what the propaganda is, the recruitment, the operations, and the motives of these uh, radical groups. And it's a totally new day for the terrorists. They're not necessarily hiding in the hills of Afghanistan right. anymore. They're on their computers. That's right, absolutely. So one of the key things that uh, you know we're looking at in the cybersecurity industry is how can we inform uh, the Hill, okay, and that, that includes meeting uh, on a regular basis with them around the challenges that we have in protecting uh, what I would call uh, law-abiding citizens versus uh, people that want to disrupt and, and harm uh, not only the U.S., but uh, mm -hmm. as well as everybody across the globe. So, How do you get around this, like, hard, super hardcore libertarian one-liner almost that says, look, you give up a li little bit of your freedom you know, in exchange for security and you lose a lot of freedom. Yeah. Now, how, do you, how do you get around that and how do you turn that back on its head? You know, this one's really challenging, Keith. I think, you know, it, I think the pendulum swings pretty rapidly when right. we come to uh, these privacy issues. And with, the, with encryption, which is top of mind right now, and a legislation was being proposed yesterday around how we manage encryption, what we do as far as opening those doors, I think as you and I as citizens, if we, if we lose our right to have encrypted communications yeah. uh, for uh, not nefarious activity, that's a real challenge. So I think within, in the foreseeable future, it's going to be very difficult for legislation to be yep. passed that would open these doors uh, and open the kimono, if you will, to uh, allow these types of inspections to happen uh, without a warrant or some kind of circumstantial evidence to really drive that. So I think it comes back to the traditional means of counterintelligence and, and channels that maybe are outside of these encrypted mm -hmm. channels that I think uh, can be that could be mined in a much better way than, well, that, than today. That raises an issue. So there's been when people talk about social media sites and terrorist, even commentary, mm -hmm. people talk about wiping it and pulling it down. But when you do that, do you send people into the shadows mm -hmm. and into places that are harder to police? Isn't there some sort of benefit potentially for law enforcement, for intelligence services, if it's more out in the open? Yeah. Does that make... I, I, no, it does. Dave, that's a great point. I mean, I, I will even kind of pivot to what's going on in France. Obviously, the horrific attacks uh, have caused some some radical changes in the way they're thinking about information communications. One thing that going back into the to the depths, there's a there's a protocol out there that your users need to be familiar with. It's called TOR, which stands for the onion right. router. And it's or the router. browser that you use to basically get into the dark web. It, exactly. So brilliant. Yeah. So they are looking at banning those types of encrypted communication. So that's not only social media, those are the deep right. undergrounds where you can get murder for hire. Uh, an arms bazaar of cyber weaponry to hit not only U.S. companies but uh, attack governments. So these are very challenging things that France is just looking similar to what China's done with their their Chinese firewall. France would have to implement something like that to block those types wow. of deep web encrypted mm -hmm. communication. Well, in the U.S. as well. Uh, I mean, so this, this this dark area where you know can government access it really is the point. Yeah, so you know, there's there's been some uh, they're, they're they're living in those communities. I will t I re rest assured from a counterintelligence perspective, mm. they're very much like developing other assets. They're in those communities developing assets to to determine what's going on from That's a propaganda and operations without question. Mm. Uh, I, I don't believe will be as significant significant as what France is doing in, in basically unilaterally blocking that. That would just not fly uh, from privacy perspective. But I think that is an interesting step that, that needs to be considered. I'll be in closing. Uh, Europe is much more progressive when it comes to cybersecurity legislation mm -hmm. than us at this point in time. Uh, their data privacy has always been a couple of steps ahead as far as um, 
protection of citizen data. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think those are going to be movements that uh, the lawmakers on the Hill will be looking at to determine what can we do that doesn't disrupt our, our privacy, but maybe moves us in a little bit more step in the right direction to protect uh, this type of activity really from going interesting. on. JD, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate your time today. JD Sherry, Cavern Systems CEO. Coming